Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here and Apple just released the macOS Monterey 12.3 update. This is a major release and in this video I'm going to talk about everything that you're going to need to know about this update including enhancements, fixes, new features including the much awaited universal control. I'm also going to touch on security updates, what's new in macOS Monterey Enterprise and of course I'm going to touch on unsupported Macs using OpenCore Legacy Patcher including an important note before you update to 12.3 and a sombering note from the developer Macola. We got a lot to cover let's jump in and get started. Apple released macOS Monterey on Monday March 14th at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. They also released the full list of other macOS and iOS releases including iOS 15.4, iPadOS 15.4, tvOS 15.4, AudioOS which is HomePod 15.4, watchOS 8.5 and on macOS Big Sur 11.6.5, macOS Catalina 2022-003 security update and Xcode 13.3. What do I mean by major update? Well, historically, Apple has made the point three release the largest, most feature-filled update of the entire release. And normally after that, Apple will only do minor fixes to the operating system and security fixes. And all the effort is being put into the next operating system, macOS 13, to get it ready before WWDC in June. Now, before we make the jump to 12.3, I always wanna recommend doing a backup, whether you're using Time Machine to back up your system or you're using external hard drive or iCloud to be able to back up your data. Again, it's always a safe measure to take just in case before you update in case something goes wrong. To update to macOS Monterey 12.3, all you need to do is go into System Preferences and then Software Update. You should see 12.3 already waiting for you when you get in. If you don't, there's two ways we can refresh this. A new trick is to go back to the System Preferences pane and then clicking anywhere to get away from the focus of the Spotlight Search, then you can go into Software Update and you can can do command R to refresh. If you try to refresh in there and you see a highlight around the spotlight search, it won't let you do the refresh with command R. Once this is done, another way to refresh the window is just clicking on advanced and then just clicking OK without making any changes and it'll automatically check again for updates. And hopefully by now it'll show up in there available for you to be able to update to. How big is the macOS Monterey 12.3 update? Well, all we need to do to find out the size is click on more info here, and you can see that this particular update for this machine coming from 12.2.1 is gonna be the smallest update at 4.3 or 4.4 gigabytes. Now I've got a list on here showing you the sizes from every single update. For example, if you go all the way from Monterey 12.0.1, it'll be 4.5. And this is a large update compared to the previous 12.2.1, which is only about 1.5 to 2.0 gigabytes. Now there's a lot under the hood on this. Like I said, it's a major update, including all the pieces for universal control. So keep in mind, that's the kind of sizes that you're gonna see. If you click on install now and you see it jump to almost five gigabytes, keep in mind, it is downloading the recovery partition to update your macOS recovery along with it. And that is not included in the initial size reading here. If you see a 11.3 gigabyte update, maybe your sealed OS is not sealed anymore and it needs to reset seal it and that's the update you'll get or if you're running an unsupported Mac with OpenCore Legacy Patcher and you had to install the patches you're going to see the full 11.3 gigabyte update. How long did the 12.3 update take to install? And on this update for the 12.3, it took 12 minutes to prepare. Then it immediately restarted and took 25 minutes to install on this 2020 M1 13 inch MacBook Pro with a total time of 37 minutes to install. After the update's finished in About This Mac, you can see that we're on 12.3 and the build number is 21E230. And why do I talk about the build number? What does it even matter? Well, if you updated to the release candidate from beta, then you're on the same version. And this is unlike 12.2, where Apple changed the build version right at release and it was different from the release candidate, which is usually very, very close to being the final version. So in that case, you would have had to update to public release. In this case, if you're already on this build version, you're good to go. If you have an Apple Silicon M1 Mac, your firmware was updated to 74591.2. If you have an Intel Mac with a T2 processor, the Bridge OS updated was 19.16142425.1. Also, Safari was included in the 12.3 update, and the new version is 15.4, 17613, 1171.6. Apple also released a full installer of macOS Monterey 12.3. 
3 it's available on my website that you can download and there's a full apple silicon m1 restore ipsw file that you can use apple configurator 2 to be able to restore your m1 mac now let's talk about the 12.3 features and changes and one of the biggest ones is universal control you've heard me talk about universal control since it was released as a feature in the first beta of mac OS monterey and it was unfortunate that it wasn't available in that beta and we thought maybe it just needed to be worked on but even when apple released the final or the public version of mac os monterey it still wasn't there it wasn't in 12.1 it wasn't in 12.2 and finally here it is in 12.3 a wonderful feature that allows you to control another mac and an ipad at the same time from one mac computer now if you want to learn more about that i created a really nice ultimate guide on how to set up and use universal control and i'll include a link in the upper right hand corner if you want to check out that video next let's talk about airpods and spatial audio it's been reported that with 12.3 you can now update your airpods firmware when it's close to your mac it has to be over 50 percent charge in the case with it near the mac and you'll be able to get firmware updates from your mac to the airpods now also spatial audio dynamic head tracking is now available in apple music with supported airpods on macs with m1 chips also you can have customizable spatial audio settings for off fixed and head tracked are now in control center again only on macs with an m1 processor so if you have intel mac you are out for this feature next let's talk about everybody's favorite feature update emoji in 12.3 we now have updated unicode 14.0 and that's across all platforms and that was released back on september 14 2021 so now that's in mac os monterey and you can see with this 12.2.1 system what happens when you try to make that emoji it does not recognize it when you go over to 12.3 you can see all the new emojis and i'll put a link in the description now let's say you want to be able to use that in a different place like maybe in a discord chat or in a document all you need to do is click on a text field like this and then do control command space and you can bring up the emoji pop up here to be able to add any emojis to wherever you are you can also check it out in the character viewer you can see all the emojis in here now let's talk about the enhancements in the 12.3 update. These are not large enough to be called features, but small enough to be able to still list and a nice improvement. First, let's talk about Siri. There's not an additional voice expanding the diversity of options. So let's take a look at our two machines here. We can see on our 12.2.1, we've got four different voices, but on our 12.3 system, we now have a voice number five. Let's click on it. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Change it later in system preferences. And there we go. That's the new voice in Surrey 12.3. There's some changes in the podcast app now. And let's take a look at our example system here where we can see this is 12.2.1. This is the new podcast in there. And you can see now we can filter by episodes. When viewing a show in your library, filter episodes by played, unplayed, downloaded, or saved. You can also browse by season. Go to any show and filter for a specific season. I also forgot to mention that on Apple Music, we can now announce enable notifications. So if you can see Apple Music notifications here in the upper right hand corner, notifications may include alerts, sounds, and icon badges. The Shortcuts app now has support for adding and removing or querying tags with reminders. Save passwords can now include your own notes if you wanted to put something in each individual site for something you want to remember. And battery capacity readings have improved accuracy. Now let's talk about some of the fixes in the 12.3 release. News widgets in today view may not open articles when clicked. Audio may sound distorted while watching video on the Apple TV app. And then some photos and videos may be unintentionally moved when organizing albums and photos. Those three issues are fixed. Now let's talk about the security fixes in the 12.3 release. Apple has included over 45 individual security fixes that will fix multiple vulnerabilities on the system. Thank you to all the security researchers who have submitted issues to Apple to get fixed. Now let's talk about Apple Enterprise changes in the 12.3 update. And this is for anybody that manages Macs at scale, for example, in business or in education. The first one is major. Python 2.7 is removed from Mac OS. Now I'm gonna include a link in the description. So if you're a Mac admin and you did not do a check to see if you're running any Python code in any of your scripts, or don't forget there's Python code in packages. Take a look at this article right here, written by Armin Scripting OSX. He did a wonderful job 
about going over all the things that you're going to need to check along with having links to be able to run your own version of Python on your Macs. AirPlay receiver on a Mac cannot be restricted by an MDM, for example, like Jamf Pro. That was asked by Mac admins if they wanted to be able to prevent AirPlay from working on corporate owned or education Macs. Improves the reliability with managed software updates when using the install later option. Also resolves an issue where software update scans can become unresponsive. And what that was is that you'd open up system preferences and you would not see an update when you know that an update has already been released. So hopefully that fixes that after you install 12.3 for future updates. Resolves an issue where DNS queries failed using Cisco AnyConnect. Resolves an issue with NTLM authentication on SMB print servers that also allow Kerberos. Resolves an issue where Safari prompts for an identity certificate multiple times. Resolves an issue on Mac computers with a T2 security chip where entering the firmware password was required to return to a login window after attempting a password reset. What that means is, is if you had a T2 Intel Mac and you have a firmware password on it and you clicked, I forgot my password, instead of booting directly into recovery, so you could reset the password, it would boot to a firmware lock screen and the Mac would be stuck in that situation. So let's talk about the Geekbench 5 benchmark. Now remember what I said in the past is that I only run this just to make sure there's no discrepancies or large changes in the benchmark scores between updates. So on 12.2.1 it was a 1753 and a 7762 multi-score and on 12.3 it was a 1751 and a 7715 on a multi-score. It is really close and that's exactly what we're looking for. For. Now let's talk about unsupported Mac news with OpenCore Legacy Patcher and Mac OS Monterey. I always make sure that I install the latest update on my Mac before I ever recommend you trying and just in case there is anything that I find that could cause problems for you. And as you can see this mid 2014 MacBook Pro is running 12.3 and I've got the latest version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.4.3 that was released today. Now there's a real big issue that you want to know about before you make the update and that's for any dialogue that where you have to save something. There was a problem that happened in the 12.3 update and this 0.4.3 fixes that save dialogue issue. So if you ever see something like that, that means that you have to update to 0.4.3 after the update to 12.3. Don't worry, I'm gonna have a extra video going over the entire 0.4.3 update for you coming up later this week. With the 0.4.3 update, Makola, who is the co-founder of OpenCore Legacy Patcher with Dina, K put out a note on the GitHub updating us on his family and his situation. And I want to read it to you. With today's Mac OS 12.3 release, I decided that it would be best to release this build of OpenCore Legacy Patcher to ensure some important issues are resolved with today's release, namely the open save dialog problem introduced by Apple in the 12.3 betas. As the situation develops back home with my family in Ukraine, I am unlikely to continue the development of OpenCore Legacy Patcher in the near future. At most, there may be a potential patcher support package updates from a sentient bot and the rest of the amazing non-metal development team. However, otherwise development may be potentially taken over by others later on. Issues will continue to be remain closed on the GitHub for the time being. With regards to the future of this project, this release should be treated as the last major release for the next couple of months. When WWDC 2022 is presented, I hope my country will be in a calmer situation where we can tinker with Max again peacefully. This is not a final goodbye for me with this project, just a roundabout way to say that I'll be returning someday. I want to give the biggest thank yous to the community and the many amazing developers within it. Open Core Legacy Patcher is not just my project. It's the accumulation of many people who are all responsible for where we are today. Makola. Makola, I wanted to personally thank you on behalf of the thousands upon thousands of people out there who have installed macOS Monterey and macOS Big Sur on their unsupported Mac to keep them running today. You can't even imagine how many responses I've received from people who can't afford to be able to run a newer Mac, and this helps them do schoolwork, business work, and help run their family. So thank you to you and to all of the developers who put together all their hard work to make this patch possible. But the bottom line is family comes first and hopefully you can help get your family to safety and I hope that this whole conflict which is absolutely horrible can be resolved 
very quickly here. Mokola put a link down here to donate to the UN's Ukraine Humanitarian Fund. And if you want to be able to help out with Ukraine during this crisis, you can go here to make a donation. And I'll be doing so later this afternoon.